Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, I'm Joanna Coles, and water is important to all of us. And today, we're going to be talking with Dr. Amanda Gumbert, and she's at the University of Kentucky, Water Quality Extension Specialist. Good That's morning. Right. Good morning. I'm glad you're here. Well, thanks for having me. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about something today that we heard quite a bit about before, but really hasn't been on the top of everybody's radar, but still something that we need to be aware of. Right, and it's kind of a hard topic to kind of wrap our minds around, mm -hmm. and, and that is the dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about that, um, we live a pretty far distance from the Gulf of Mexico, right? Right. We might go there on vacation, and we know we drive, and we drive, and we drive to get there. Um, but what we need to understand is the water that we use here in Kentucky eventually makes its way to the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. And so how we treat that water is really important for a number of reasons, but one being that once it makes its way into the Mississippi River and on down to the Gulf of Mexico, we can't really treat it anymore. Right. And when it gets there, a lot of times it takes things like sediment. So that's why the Mississippi is called the the uh, the Big Muddy. Um, is it carries lots of sediment with it. So that's what kind of looks like chocolate milk. Um, and that sediment oftentimes has nutrients affiliated with it. Or even there are also nutrients that are dissolved in the water. And so those excess nutrients travel, they truck on down. You know, if we think of Kentucky and we're here in, in Bowling Green and, and my goodness, you've got so much uh, groundwater and surface water interactions, but eventually any of that water that runs off will get to um, either the Ohio River or directly into the Mississippi and then on down to the Gulf. Um, and we have what's called a dead zone on the edge of the Gulf. So it's kind of along the Louisiana and Texas border. Mm -hmm. And it's this area where nothing can really live. So um, there's not enough oxygen. Mm -hmm. So let's think about, uh, and there's a, a picture there on the screen for you to see that red area that's there along the coast is what we call the dead zone. And so essentially it's an area that is deplete of oxygen. And we think about fish. Fish, um, when I talk to kids about, about um, critters that live in the stream and, and fish, you know, I think of the, of the gills. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of, you know, we pump our arms and we're like, this is how a fish breathes. We breathe through our lungs, but a fish uses their gills to get oxygen out of the water itself. And the same thing for shellfish. Um, and so when we have too many nutrients, and when I say nutrients, I don't mean like the good stuff that we get out of eating our breakfast in the morning. I'm talking about excess fertilizer, nitrogen, phosphorus, mm -hmm. as those two especially. Um, and those nutrients can come from other things as well, but those excess um, nitrogen and phosphorus in the water causes algae to bloom. And like we see ponds are kind of scummy in the summer um, or any time really um, throughout the year. Those are algae that grow on top. And when those algae are massed essentially in the Gulf, then they start to die. And when they die, they drop down in the water column and all the microbes start to chew them up and they use oxygen to decompose the algae. Mm -hmm. So that results in this dead zone. Um, and so it's hard for us, again, it seems so far away, mm -hmm. right? Um, and last year, some of our, our viewers, you may have seen on um, the news that last July, they measured the dead zone and it was the largest that we had ever had. Um, and these dead zones exist all over the world. But ours in the Gulf, we know has been really um, accelerated by our human activity. And so, um, so what we're trying to do is figure out how we can do how better. We can help. Yeah. yeah, how we can help, how we can do better. And so if we kind of come back up the watershed and you know paddle up river, so to speak, and we think about what we do every day, those things can make a real difference. So it's things like, you know, if you have a, a pet and you, and, and you know, I grew up on a farm and so like picking up after my dog, you know, <laughs> went to the bathroom was kind of a foreign thing to think about. Um, but if you live in a neighborhood and you have a really small lawn mm -hmm. and your pet goes out every day and, you know, does its business, if you don't pick up after that pet, eventually that waste that animal manure, we'll say, is going to run off and get into the storm drain system. And then it gets straight into our streams and rivers. Um, but there's, there's lots of other things, you know, making sure we do a soil test before we put fertilizer on. Um, those are things we can do to help reduce those excess 
nutrients that get into our water system. To just be mindful because all the water is here and we need to protect it and take care of it. And so thanks for those reminders. And if you have any questions about how you can help protect the water, contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.